Hey, boys and girls. This is uh, M13. I am in Winnipeg, Canada, and evidently this is a, our only curvy street. And I did, I'm not familiar with this street. Uh, we were just on uh, Main Street, heading out to Lockport. <laughs> I'm not 100% certain on that. We were heading out to Lockport on the main road, and then they turned off here, and I, I haven't been on this road before, and I do believe this is some kind of alternative way, maybe it's a, a nice back street with a few curves in it. And of course you have a river right there because the only time in Manitoba you're going to get a, a, a street that isn't perfectly straight is when it's following a river. So that's the only way you can find curvy roads in, in uh, Manitoba because in other places you get curvy roads because of hills or mountains or other stuff, but here we get, we don't have, it, it is so flat. I took a picture from the airplane and it is like, I knew Manitoba was flat. It's called the Prairie Lands. <laughs> He's laughing. I'm talking to the camera. He's making fun of me, talking to you guys. So, this is my cousin and a friend. Got the nice Batman symbol on his bike. It does look like a Batmobile. There's another bike that looks just like that. It's also made by Honda, but it's an automatic. That also looks like a Batmobile. Like, so, that's what I thought it was at first. I thought it was an automatic, but I was mistaken. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Yeah, that's nice. So, oh, I'm gonna get some golfers. Yeah, I've never done this road before, and this is, this is a bit disconcerting, because I rode motorcycles in this city for five years, and I never did this road. <laughs> Evidently there was a decent road to practice my cornering on that I did not know about for some strange reason. It's better to keep those guys in the pit frame, give you guys something nice to look. Oh my god, oh, I honestly thought that was real at first. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, a bison. I thought they were extinct. No, I think we still have, no, there's still bison around. It's the buffaloes, buffalo that are extinct. Anyways, yeah, so what do I think about Canada versus Taiwan now that I'm back? Do I want to move back? Do I miss it so much? It's, I don't know, like the, the pros and cons are just like, they're all over there. It's, it, this is just so different, you know? In a lot of ways, this is a great place to visit. It's clean, it's beautiful. The homes are, all the homes are nice. The people are really friendly. I've got a lot of old friends here and, and, and they always welcome me back when I come back and then I could I could make friends with their friends easily enough because this Travis guy, I just started talking to him on Facebook and he's friendly as heck. He's gosh darn friendly as heck, this Travis he is. So, so yeah, I, I could I could I could see myself fitting back into this. Oh my nice, fit, fitting fitting back into this uh, society fairly easily. But um, but on the other hand, it's it's a tiny city in the middle of the prairies, and it's so disconnected from everything else. One thing that has really shocked me, like, is the prices of things here are so cheap. <laughs> like I'm like like. Things here are cheaper than, like groceries here are cheaper than in Taiwan. And that kind of blew my mind because Taiwan, the prices in Taiwan are comparable to like prices in Thailand and Vietnam and like, like countries where, that are famous throughout the world for being so, 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 so cheap. That's, Taiwan is comparable to those countries. And then stuff here is, is some things are even cheaper. Oh my goodness, that's a mansion and a half, eh? Look at that. My goodness. So, for sale, what was that an empty an empty lot just next to the river there? I guess. I guess if you built if you built a house on stilts there, you could you could do it. I don't know, man. So close to the river. I who'd, who'd want to buy that? <coughs> so yeah, so it's weird. I, I kind of it's really hard to say. I, I think in an ideal world, I'd probably like spend my winters in Taiwan and then my summers in Canada or in Winnipeg. That's like, yeah, that would be the dream. I, I, I highly doubt it could become a reality, but nonetheless. 
one can always daydream. And uh, yeah, so it's... I'm really surprised how... Because, like, you go to, like, Super Value and stuff, and you can get... For example, the other day we had a meat pie, and the meat pie costs like eight bucks Canadian. So that's probably like what six bucks American, and it fed four adults. So for six dollars, we had a good meal that fed four people, and it was fairly healthy. So, like that just that kind of blew my mind, and it was Western food, which I love. And I, for me to eat Western food in Taiwan, I'm, I'm always paying a premium for it. I can get the local Chinese food for cheap. I can get a meal at a restaurant in Taiwan for about three bucks. That's that's decent. Uh, it's usually a bit oily. It's not that great for you. But uh, but yeah. So prices, it's, it's just it's it's a it's a mishmash of pros and cons. But but the great thing about Taiwan is it's Taiwan is it's the population of Canada roughly squeezed into a, the. The, uh, the Vancouver Island, which is a, a small island off the coast of Vancouver, Canada. So, and then you, we have, we have, it's kind of like just taking all of Canada and squeezing it down to the size of a small island. And that's what Taiwan is. And, that, and then what the great thing about that is you can go from your city to a totally different city in just a couple hours, or not even, in, you know, in a 30 minute motorcycle ride, I could travel through three dip, separate cities with with different, uh, I'd like to say different scenery, but it, that's not really true. If Cities do change as you travel, but the cities that are side by side generally look the same. Um, but nonetheless, you know, Taiwan has about five different large amusement parks, like Disneyland type places, five of them. And they're all within, they're, all of them are within six, seven hours of me. In Canada, there's not a single amusement park within six, seven hours of here. I'd probably have to get on a plane to find an amusement park, and that would just be one amusement park, not five or six giant ones. It's just, when you're in Taiwan, it's everything you, everything is, there's just so much more of everything, and it's all easily reachable, even on a scooter. is a really nice road. I've never done this. I've never done this road before. I feel so, I honestly feel so dumb. Why didn't anybody ever show me this road when I used to live here? My goodness. just I love the air quality out here though like where I live in Taiwan it has better air quality than most of the other place cities in Taiwan uh, and Taiwan has air quality that's like a hundred times cleaner than China and this just shits all over Taiwan and China you know it, like it's just when you come to Winnipeg Winnipeg is some of the cleanest air in all of Canada uh, like Vancouver has some pollution now because the population is high and whatnot. But in Winnipeg, you can see forever, and it, and it, and and your vision doesn't de doesn't degrade with distance. Like in Taiwan, if you've got a nice red car next to you, as it drives away, like it gets a, a half a mile away, it's it's already not red anymore. It's kind of a dull red. Then it gets a mile away and then it's kind of a pinkish and then it's like two miles away and then it's kind of a grayish. In Canada, in Winnipeg, if you got a red car next to you, when it's five miles away, if, if, if the road's flat and straight, which it normally is, when the car is five miles away, it's still the same color as it was when it was directly beside you. It doesn't, because there's no pollution in there. There's nothing to degrade your vision. It, it, it's, it's almost trippy when you come here from someplace with pollution. And that's not just Taiwan. If you were to if you live in New York or some other large city, if you were just to one day get on a plane and fly to Winnipeg and then get off the plane, it's just, wow. But you don't have to go to Winnipeg. You go to Ohio or some other prairie city. Anyways, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to have to see how I feel when I get back to Taiwan. I'm loving this right now, but but that's because we're busy and we're doing stuff all the time. And then you got to remember, winters, you can't do anything in the winter here. You can go to malls. That's about it. You're trapped in your house for six months. It's... it's, it's it's, it's pretty messed up. 
if you have a good entertainment system and whatnot, and you know, if you got a job that you like going to, it's, it's not the end of the world, but. And I'm exaggerating a bit, isn't it, you know? But my son's never experienced winter winter. I'm, I'm, I'm sure in the beginning it's going to be very difficult for him to deal with, like, air that hurts to breathe. These homes, though, like... It always astounds me how there are so many people that can afford so many beautiful homes in such a small city. Like, how can this many people be rich in, in a city this small? <laughs> What's this guy doing? Just swinging his golf club out into the road. What a weirdo. Why is he? Why? What? What's? Oh, he's knocking. Maybe he's knocking rocks off the road or something. Still a weirdo. Look at this old school shop, man. Look at that. How are we doing this? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't, you know how depressing it is? Like, I rode motorcycles for five years in the city and I don't think I ever once did that road. Really? Really? I just, I just came to Lockport all the way down the main... Henderson or the main highway? I guess, well, Main Street, right? Goes to Lockport? I never did, not once. No one ever showed me that road. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it was. I was really surprised. Dude, you know what? We can go. Yeah, we can go we can right now. So one of the things I always look forward to eating when I come back to Canada is pierogies. And Americans and British people do not know what that is, probably. But as Canadians all do. Uh, this one has, it's, it's, they're dumplings, just like Chinese, Chinese people have dumplings all the time. And that's what this is, it's just a Canadian dumpling. And instead of having like pork in it and some weird, and pork and spinach, instead you get potato, cheddar cheese and onion inside of it. And then you eat them with sour cream, which is important. And then I guess that's going on the side, sausage and caramelized onion. And we've got a salad over here. Salad with every meal so far. It's great. It's like a, it's like a Greek salad. Yeah. And then we got banana bread, some cookies. I bought some, what did I buy? I bought some, where'd they go? Original two bite brownies are the good brownies JD JD has a new best friend my my cousin Kenny is spoiling him he, he bought him some Lego Pokemon not Lego but similar building block Pokemon yeah he, what, what, oh, JD well, it's it was on the edge of the table when things are on the edge of the table they fall off so that's why we don't put things on the edge of the table right you don't put things on the edge you put them uh oh you broke one of those legs <gasps> oh where did you find the leg there you go Pikachu yeah. also shoots his lightning yeah the Pikachu looks cool because he's got like see-through lightning bolts that shoot and you did his tail by yourself right good boy yeah. Pikachu! Pika Pika! Pika Pika! Pika Pika! Pika Pika!